Hello, everyone. My name is Zijie Li. I'm currently a graduate student at Carnegie Mellon University. The topic of my talk today is Graph Neural Network for Lagrangian Fluid Simulation, a data-driven model we propose for fast particle-based fluid simulation. This work is done under the supervision of Professor Amir Bharati Farabani, who is the PI for Mechanical and AI Lab at Carnegie Mellon University. The background of my talk today is that despite the development in computing powers today, fluid simulation in large high resolution scene is still costly. And on the other hand, with advances in deep learning algorithms and many promising computing devices like GPU high end cluster, which is very efficient for deep learning algorithms to be deployed. So this opens up the possibility for employing deep learning techniques to predicting physics and accelerates physics simulation. So specifically in particle-based methods that particle themselves are represented as point clouds. We do not have structure grid structure, structure grid like in those grid-based methods. So that means we cannot directly apply a very powerful and commonly used deep learning building blocks that is convolutional neural network directly to our point cloud representation. And also that if we want to build a model on the point cloud reconstructed from the fluid field, then that means the point cloud, they need to subject it to specific constraint, like for incompressible flow, then the density should remain constant and also the velocity should be divergence free. In general, the, the model of particle-based methods imposes the inductive bias for our where to be built deep learning model to capture. The first one is the strong locality. So in SPH and many, it's variant method that particles in the nearby area will have very close, will have very close value if they are, their distance are small. So our deep learning model should also predict that predict the feature of every particles based on this strong locality. And also that point cloud, they are translation invariant and permutation invariant. That means that, so here we have, we got two arrays representing the exact same point cloud position, but under a permutation. Ideally, the deep learning model should identify this two array as the exact same point cloud, but for many standards deep learning building blocks like fully connected neural network or LSTM or CNN. So this cannot be directly identified without fitting a large amount of data. So here we chose another more flexible representation to represent our particle in the fluids. That is the, we use graph to uh, represent the particles. For particles that are within the connectivity radius, we establish an edge be between them. So here we construct a graph based on the particle. And then next we will use a neural network that operates on graph to serve as the deep learning model for fast physics simulation here. So here is the overview of the model we propose. In general, observing that many force-based SPH methods adopt a similar scheme that is advection first based on gravity and viscosity, then you use the inter pressure calculated from intermediate states to update the fluid to the state of next frame. So here we also design three subnetworks. Two of them emulates this process. The first one is the vacuum net. It predicts an accel acceleration based on gravity and viscosity parameters. Then we use collision net to, to adjust the velocity field. So it applied a velocity correction to the velocity. And at last, we use a pressure net to calculate the pressure and project it back 
using the pressure gradient and update the particles to the state of next frame. Specifically, for a vacuum net and graph and pressure net, we use node-focused graph neural network structure. So node-focused node network that passes messages and learns and operates on node features. As for collision net, we use edge-focused network to fulfill the learning. So first, for node-focused network internally, first we aggregate features from neighbor particles, that is the aggregation from the neighbor. So this is like a convolution in terms of the graph. Then after doing this, we got a vector that is the graphical embedding on every node. So here we will apply a shared multi-layer perceptron to the feature, every node feature. So here, the multi-layer perceptron is shared across all the nodes in the graph. Then at last, we got the output prediction we want. For advection net, this can be the acceleration. For pressure net, the prediction here is the pressure. Then we use this prediction to update the particle's states. As for edge-focused network, so why collision net is designed as an edge-focused network is that collision is actually a pairwise effect. So we cannot define collision on a single particle. So we at, at least we should have two particles involved for a collision. So here in the graph, we will two particles involved in a, in a collision process as two vertices. So if this two particles collide on each other, then these two vertices, these two nodes, we will establish an edge among them. So for edge features, we do not use global information. We do not use global position or global velocity because in collision, we have, we the collision itself is actually a process regardless of global position or global velocity. Uh, instead, they, they are more they are more like a process based on relative position and relative velocity. So here we also input relative position and relative velocity as the input of collision net. And then we use the shared multi-layer perceptron on every edges to done the high level transformation. And at last we got uh, edge embedding and aggregate them, we got, then we have the overall effect on the central node. So here the aggregation is that in collision calculation, we first calculate all the possible collision. Then we need to sum up this collision that happens on the target particle to see uh, the overall effect on it. And here the aggregation is doing a similar process. So in general, with this mod, with this three sub networks, then we eliminate the the computational expensive iterative calculation scheme in the traditional methods. And internally, the implementation of two sub networks is shown here as the message passing function in the aggregator of the node focus network is similar as an uh, is similar to many graph convolution based aggregator so in first we use the smoothing kernel so this the same smoothing kernel many sph based methods adopt we use smoothing kernel as weight function we weighted across the feature embedding and also a self, the, as the graph is self-connected, which means we also need to add the feature from the, partic the central particle itself. Then we apply a linear transformation and then we use a nonlinear activation function on the, on the feature we got. As for the message passing function in the aggregator of edge-focused network, we just use a summation. So summation is very efficient. It's also permutation invariant. We sum up all the edge embedding and apply a linear transformation to, sh to shrink the dimension to, uh, 
to a desirable dimension. For instance, if the edge embedding is 128 dimension, so for prediction, we would like to got a vector that is three dimension for velocity. So here, then we will use uh, three by 20, 128 weight matrix to, done the, to fulfill the linear transformation. So for training data and test sequence, we use a um, highly accurate particle-based method that is called moving particle semi-implicit. So particle-based methods that prioritizes accuracy over calculation efficiency. We use very simple training settings, like very simple geometries and we place it in a small box in random location. After getting this test and train sequence, we extract the advection information to train advection nets. We use pressure information to train pressure nets. As for collision net, we simulate another simple particle system that is only updated based on the collision rule. So we want the collision net to learn to predict an effect that is similar to the similar to the elastic collision. So we first evaluates the model performance on a single frame inference. For advection net, we challenge it by applying it with different set of material parameters. That is, we use different gravity force and different viscosity parameters. Viscosity parameters can range from 0 0.1 to 0 0.001, very small. So with this large range of variation on the parameters, the advection net is still be able to predict a reasonably low error on the acceleration. For pressure net, we calculate the relative tolerance of its predicted pressure under pressure poison equation. And also for pressure net, you can see here, it also maintains a relatively low error level. And most importantly, we want to know how much efficiency we have gained after building this data-driven model. So we also benchmark a single frame inference time. So totally, in general, the single frames inference time of our model is about 200 milliseconds a frame. And for MPS, that's 700, about 700 milliseconds. But if we take a close look, we excluded the time needed for near risk neighbor searching, then we can see that the inference time on our model is only seven milliseconds. So this is a huge gain from the traditional solving scheme. And next we will see that this kind of gain on the calculation efficiency is done on the on the on the base that we do not lose much of the accuracy in our model. So through this visualization of rollout sequence, we can see that our model's result has little difference with the ground truth solver. Also, the dam collapse case here, our model's prediction is agrees perfectly with the result from the ground truth solver. And as for the physical detail behind it, we can see that the pressure prediction, the average pressure of the whole fluid field, our model's results agrees quite well with the ground truth solver's results. And also in terms of maintaining a constant density field, here we are simulating incompressible flow. We can see that our network's result, that the orange line here, also is maintaining a consistent low error level with the co initial constant density. Also, our model can predict reasonable pressure distribution. As you can see here, as time goes through in this circular flow case, our model can also capture the pressure, higher, lower pressure region change and agrees well with the ground truth result. Also, despite that the model itself, our data-driven model is trained on very limited and simple training settings, it can be extrapolated to geometries that is complex and beyond the training data distribution. 
as shown here in the canyon flow and Stanford Bonnie, two much more complicated geometries are involved and much more particles uh, in the scene, our model can still remain robust and accurate. So in here, and we also done some quantitative analysis by measuring the position arrow from our data for our results to the ground truth data sequence. So we use the chamfer distance to evaluate the position arrow of every point in a point cloud to another point cloud. So as shown here, in both the canyon flow and bunny, the arrow level is able to be maintained in a small number that is for canyon flow that is 0 0.05 meters average for each particle. And for bunny is even approximately 0 0.03. So this also indicates that our model can remain stable and converge in even very complex geometries that is beyond training data distribution. And in general, our model, our proposed model demonstrate the capability the, of combining learning based methods with traditional physics, physics simulation methods, and we can use state of art promising learning based methods to help us accelerate the traditional physics simulation.